I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to, to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. In fact, that is just why a vague religion, all about feeling God in nature and so on, is so attractive. It is all thrills and no work, like watching the waves from the beach. But you will not get New Finland by f studying the Atlantic that way, and you will not get eternal life by simply feeling the presence of God in flowers or music. Neither will you get anywhere by looking up at maps without going to sea, nor will you be very safe if you go to sea without a map. In other words, theology is practical, especially now. In the old days, when there was less education and discussion, perhaps it was possible to get on with a very few simple ideas about God. But it is not so now. Everyone reads. Everyone hears things. Discussed. Consequently, if you do not listen to theology, that will not mean that you do not have ideas about God. It will mean that you have a lot of wrong ones. Bad, muddled, out-of-date ideas. For a great many of the ideas about God which are trotted out as novelties today are simply the ones which real theologians tried centuries ago and rejected. Who will be saved? Creed, next, on So What. So let the rain go. You can't blow the house down. Now, brothers, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved if you hold firmly to the word I preached to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. Hi, I'm Chris Dorman. And I'm Don Wade, man. Welcome back to So What? You believed in vain. <laughs> so that's, that's wild to even think about the idea that I can believe something but believe it in vain, that I can have a belief about something about God and ultimately, in the end, actually Witness. not be saved. Right. So last week we looked at the first two words in the creed are, I believe. And we saw that, that to believe, to have faith, is not just simply a bare assent to the truth. It, it includes that assent to the truth, but it's more than that. It's a commitment to that truth. It's obedience to that truth. It's a trusting of that truth. It's an entrusting of our entire yeah. selves and for all eternity, our souls, to this truth. That's what faith is. But faith is also something else that we sort of ran out of time last week, we, 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 well, a little last week, and we didn't talk about it. And that is that faith is not something in the past tense. It's present. The creed isn't, I believed, but it's, I believe. And that passage out of 1 Corinthians, Paul is, is saying, look, it, it, you can believe and believe in vain. You can. You really, really can. Because if you believed and are not currently believing, you will not be saved. Jesus said those who, those who stand firm to the end will be saved. All those promises to those churches in Revelation are about those who persevere to the end, they will receive. And that message is, is throughout Hebrews and Colossians and 1st and 2nd Corinthians. I mean, Paul in 1st Corinthians is saying, look, I could forfeit. I could be disqualified for the prize, okay? After everything I've done, everything I've taught, Everything I've taught others, everything I've professed to believe, all the sacrifices I make, if I don't persevere until the end, if I don't, if I don't beat my flesh, if I don't subject myself unto him, I believed in vain. And again, not, not to be taken as it's all about me. No. Nope. God will do that work. In fact, he's promised that work. He, he will who persevere. began the good work and you will bring it to completion. Yes. But what that does is it helps us to contextualize what's going on. Chris, I believe when somebody, I believe when people say, you know, that they believe at some point in their lives and then you see their lives completely go off the rails and you've never, and you never see them come back. 
They never come back. They never, and they just walk away. Right. And they just walk away. Well, what's going on? Well, they don't have an abiding faith. They don't have an abiding right. believing that's active moving forward. Right. It's not enough for us to just say, I believed something at one point in my life, and that's good enough. It isn't. It's not. It's not good enough. If you said a prayer, filled out a card, and then went about your life, and you're, you're, you, you don't, you're not committed to that truth, you're not living in obedience to that truth, you're not trusting in that truth, mm-hmm. then all of that means, as we looked at in our last podcast, you have no confidence in your salvation. It's those who are believing in him who are saved. And, and our Lord himself said that to us. And so today we just want to look at really primarily just one passage. We could look at a lot. We want to look at <laughs> primarily one passage. And these are the words of our Lord out of John chapter 11. Let me get this. Actually, I should have had it queued up already. Sorry about that, Chris. But John chapter 11 simply tells us, starting in verse, I'm going to actually start in verse 24. Okay. Just so we have some context here. Martha said to Jesus, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives, believes in me, shall never die. Do you believe this? And so the crux of of what Jesus is saying in verse 25, he said to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. Now, unfortunately, in the English language, it's a little right. challenging. Yeah. Because it's, it's, it's not picking up on really the grammar that's being used. Mm-hmm. The grammar behind this isn't just simply saying, hey, if this person believes in me, they're going to live. He's actually making a statement about what kind of person this is, the quality of the person. Yeah. It's a participle yeah. being used. And the Greek participle is actually telling you that it's not just a guy, but a believing guy and a guy who's living. So what kind of a person? It's, a, it's an ongoing action. It's, it's an active participle. So they are the continually believing guy. It's not just somebody who believed at one point, mm-hmm. but it's an ongoing, as I'm moving forward, never really faltering guy in terms of my belief. I believe something. And to the point where I can say, you are a believing guy or you're a believing gal. You're not just somebody who believes, but that's who you are. Yeah. It's an identity thing. Right, if you were actually reading the Greek, Jesus is saying, the believing one in me. There you go. Okay, the one who's in a, per, a, in a, a, a perpetual, a present state of believing in me, he or she will live. Okay, that person, the believing one in me. And if you keep that in mind, then you'll see really what Jesus is saying. It's not enough that at one point you professed faith in me because that's not enough. It's only those who persevere to the end who are saved. It's only those who are believing in me, who are in a present state of believing in me. Again, all that belief means, assent to the truth, commitment to the truth, obedience to the truth, a trusting of that truth. Trust. In a present tense, believing in. Now, that's who will be saved. Now, somebody might you know hear what we're saying, Chris, and say, yeah, but once you're saved, you're always saved. That is true. That is true Absolutely. because it is it is God who saves and God who perseveres, okay? He perseveres the believer. He will carry it on to completion. But that does not mean that we sit back on our passive, right? right? We must pursue, as we have been pursued by God, as we have been saved by God, the, the cry of the heart of the believer is to continually be in pursuit right. of God. That's to know response. him more. That was the cry of Paul's heart, that I might know no. him. He who knew Jesus, who knew him. Jesus appeared to him personally and talked to him, spoke with him, taught him the gospel. But he says, no, 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 I want more. I want to know him. That's the cry of faith. That's the cry of the believing one in him. And that is that is an outcome in a rep- in a response to what we just talked about in the last series, which is, what has God done with my sin? Yes. When God has put away my sin, when mm-hmm. he's trodden my sin underfoot, when he has, yeah. he, when he has cast as far as the east is from the west, my response is to believe to in trust. an abiding way, to trust. Yeah, not just assent. Not just I assent. I do assent, right. but trust. Trust in the way to say, look, man, when I see that rope, I, it's one thing to say, man, I think that rope is a really strong rope. It's another thing for me to tie that rope to a tree and, and tie it to my waist and jump off a cliff. 
Now I'm trusting that that rope is strong. And that that tree is strong. Ah, well, there you go. <laughs> right? Is that branch strong enough to hold your weight? Right? I'm a little guy. It can happen. Right? No, right? no but that's, there's a big difference between right. saying I assent to that and putting my trust in it where I'm going to put my life in its hands. Yeah. Right? That's, and that's what God's calling us to, a belief right. and an ardent belief that will continue and abide. I love that word abide. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that it doesn't wax and wane. No, nope. because we're frail and it does and our faith does wax and wane. It does. And I've been there and I've, I struggled with that and, and uh, I still do sometimes. Mm -hmm. I do. But there are certain things that are beyond faith in my life that I know to be true. I know the Bible is true. I know the gospel is true. I know that Jesus <clears throat> lives. I know that he's put away my sin forever. Mm -hmm. And I know that I will spend eternity with him forever. I know those things. Wow. It's, it's gone beyond um, I'm hoping and believing, whatever. It's, it's much deeper than that. It's truly who I've become. Yeah, and I like what you said there, that hope idea, right? It's, like, it's not hoping like we talk about hope today, right. but a hope that's anchored in truth that we right. know absolutely for certain yeah. that it will come to fruition. Right. Right? Yeah. That's it's a awesome. guaranteed hope. Guaranteed It's hope. a guarantee. It's a promise. And I know he is faithful to his promises. So the question is, is are you a believing one? Or are you staking your eternity on something that you may have done years ago, decades ago, but has no abiding... Um, transformational power in your life and you look at your life and you see this is how I'm living my life am I living like I believe this am I living my life in obedience to this am I am I living my life that I really trust that I really trust this God now if the answer to those questions are no then thankfully it's not too late right you can repent of your sin you can commit your life to the lordship of Jesus Christ and live and believe and be a believing one in him because they and only they will be saved. That's not a popular message today in a time of easy believism, okay? Yeah. But it's true. It's absolutely true. Because we're not saying it. The scripture itself is saying it. No. Believe. Be a believing one and be saved. Thank you for tuning in, my friends, and God willing, I'll talk to you next week. We'll see you real soon.